What is up, guys? Wrestling Premiere is here. Oh man, where do we even begin with this one? The Rock, the great one, perhaps the greatest wrestler ever, decided to reinvent himself. He thought to himself, if these fans are booing me, I'm gonna give them a reason to. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Hollywood Rock is one, his awesome theme song with the helicopter Titantron, and second, Smackdown Here Comes the Pain, and three, Sacramento. So, he brought us some great memories with this iteration of his character, and in this video, I cover The Rock's Hollywood heel run, but you already know that, so right now, let's go back to 2002, but before we do, let me just say, you can go follow my Twitter if you want, I'm starting to post there frequently, and yeah, that's it. Alright, let's get into it. 2002, the year The Rock decided to go all in and try out Hollywood. He previously starred in The Scorpion King, featuring some state-of-the-art CGI. The movie made $165 million at the box office on a $60 million budget. So, after seeing these numbers, you realize why Rock took the jump to Hollywood. I mean, it proved that he was a success in the movie business. It also meant that he was set to take more time away from the WWE. He dropped the title to Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, and funnily enough, the fans booed him during the match. After the matchup though, The Rock cut a heel promo, he told the fans that whether or not they like it, The Rock is leaving as the people's champ, and as of now, sing along with The Rock is over. He basically planted the seeds for the heel turn. After this, he went on to film The Rundown, I believe, and by the time he came back in January 2003, he was a different man compared to the great one we previously seen several months beforehand. Well, obviously he wasn't that different, it was just he had the shaved head, he was acting all arrogant and stuff, he was just a bit different. On the January 30th, 2003 episode of SmackDown, Mr. McMahon was all pissed off at Hollywood Hogan's return, so he decided to book Hogan in a matchup against The Rock at No Way Out. The Great One appeared via satellite as the fans booed. Despite this, they followed along when he said that finally he's in Green Bay. He thanked God he wasn't in Green Bay at the moment, because he was via satellite, and he said that he liked the pie there though. The Rock accepted the match McMahon put him in and he insulted Hogan's star power. He said that he has great respect for Hogan and at Montreal, no way out, Hogan's gonna summon that power, and then he's starting to make sounds and like faces, blah, 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 blah. he's mocking Hulk Hogan basically. He said that he's gonna make Hogan relive that exact same excitement and relive that exact same result. The following week, The Rock once again appeared but via satellite. He said, finally, The Rock's back in Philadelphia while the fans booed him because once again, he wasn't actually in the arena. He said that he wouldn't be caught dead eating a cheesesteak because he's lactose intolerant. He, he then asked his girl to make him some Tampa Bay tofu as the fans booed. Man, he's too much. Like, some of the claims he makes, like, they're so ridiculous and funny. Well, you guys already know that. Hogan chants intensified as The Rock stated he will always be proud of being the people's champ, but then he noticed that some of the fans booed him. The Great One said that's fine because The Rock forever and always will entertain them. Hogan's gonna dial 1-800, I wanna get my ass kicked by The Rock before yelling at his girl about tofu again. It was really entertaining, and I didn't really do the promo justice. Like, you should go check it out. It's my first time watching it, and I was really entertained, obviously, because it's a freaking Rock. Later that night, The Rock decided to interrupt Hogan. He said that he cannot wait for the matchup, and he wants to listen to what Hogan has to say. And action. You know, Hollywood. Hogan said that he didn't think Rock was too scared to come from Hollywood with his shaved head and get into the ring. The Rock stopped him there and told him to get to the part where he does his shtick, you know, I'll let me tell you though. Take two, action. Hogan said that distance is a luxury because if he was in this ring, and all of a sudden The Rock decided to leave the interview to eat tofu. He told Hogan not to bore the fans out with the vitamins and whatnot. Talk about how you're gonna beat The Rock and do this stuff, you know, ah, blah, blah. Before leaving, The Rock told Hogan to remind him to whip his ass before leaving for tofu and pie. He did his legendary catchphrase, and that's it. Hogan was shouting while The Rock disappeared and went on to eat his dinner. On the final SmackDown before No Way Out, The Rock finally appeared live in a WWE ring. The fans booed him and he asked if they understood the ramifications of booing The Rock. They continued booing him and he said that at No Way Out, the fans are gonna get the jabroni beaten, pie eaten, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, crystal clear, have no fear, make more money than y'all make in a year. They're booing, climb a tree, scratch an itch, make Hulk Hogan his little, the people's champion, The Rock. He's tearing into the crowd, like, he knows that they've been booing him and he's fed up. He's like, you know what, I'm gonna make you boo me, it's simple as that. Despite that, they still follow along in his sing-alongs and stuff like that. He said that he's confronting Hogan later that night and he did his signature catchphrase before the fans joined in. He said that sing-along with The Rock is over, out the window. After 10 minutes, y'all are booing and now, yay, yeah, if you smell, have some respect for God's sakes. Before he said, is cooking as the fans went silently. He absolutely shut them up. He told them you guys are sheep for following along and they were silent. Later that night, both men stood in the presence of one another. The Rock drank water, I don't know why I have to mention that. He said that he came out here to clear the air. 
because an apology for the disrespectful and rude things that have happened. He then said that he is willing to accept Hogan's apology. The fans chant to the Rocky sucks as the great one mentioned Hogan calling him a rock -a jabroni He then told Hogan to know his role and shut his mouth, and he reminded him of WrestleMania and how The Rock himself made Hogan popular again. He said that Hollywood Hogan's entire career resurgence is because of The Rock. The Hulkster death stared The Rock as he asked him if he's gonna apologize to The Rock. Hogan shouted hell no and he said that Rock Jabroni isn't responsible for the comeback of Hulk Hogan, but it's because of these fans. Rock replied to this stating that he whooped Hogan's ass so hard that he doesn't remember the matchup. The Hulkster was about to erupt and he, he was at a boiling point as The Rock continued speaking. He shouted for the millions and millions of The Rock's fans and he spoke in Hulk's language, you know, well, let me tell you something. Hogan tore his shirt off and The Rock ran to the apron. He said that he was just playing and having fun and he offered his hand out to Hogan. As he was about to shake The Great One's hand, The Rock decided to spit in his face. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know that this is the ultimate sign of disrespect. And no way out, The Rock debuted the first version of his Hollywood entrance theme, Titan Tron, all that, and he made the fans wait really long for him to come out. Now about the match, the match itself it wasn't as electric as the WrestleMania match. It didn't capture the magic from the first one, and plus it ended in a screw job in Montreal with The Rock winning this one. Now with that said, for some reason, The Rock appeared on Raw the next night. JR and Jerry Lawler were shocked and befuddled at this. Alright, I'm just gonna say this. This is a very well-known promo on the career of The Rock. In Toronto, The Rock absolutely obliterated the crowd. Here it is. Finally, The Rock has come back to Tara. Tara. To run his mouth on all your candy asses. Oh yeah, The Rock is on Raw. Woo woo. Now, don't start chanting Rocky yet. You've got to hear what The Rock is going to say, and then you can decide if you're going to chant Rocky or not. He spoke about the match with Hogan and how Vince did him a favor by allowing him to appear on Raw. And once again, here's a quote from the actual promo. So The Rock said he wanted to go live Monday night on Raw. More importantly than that, The Rock said he wanted to come right here to Toronto, Canada. The fans cheered him and he ripped into him. Are you kidding, The Rock? What, is this the first time you've ever heard someone mention your city? Is that, oh yay, hooray, he said Toronto, oh yay, that's where we live. We live in Toronto, yeah, shut up. He had no mercy, this is the place where it all started. The fans started to boom in Toronto and he's like, you know what? I blame you guys for this. You guys began this thing, and so I'm going to punish you by insulting the city. He mentioned how in Toronto the people turned on the people's champ, you know, WrestleMania 18, and once again here. Oh, no, 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 don't. No, we didn't, Rock. Oh, yes, you did. Last year at WrestleMania, 68,000 strong. 68,000 of you mother Canuckers booed The Rock out of the building. Did you actually think The Rock was just going to forget? Is that what you thought? Did you think that The Rock was just going to let it slide? Is that what you think? It doesn't matter what you people think. Some fans were booing The Rock, and he decided to reply with this. Oh, no, you don't boo The Rock. Look at you, fatty. The Rock gets more pie in a week than you get in a lifetime. And then spoke about how the fans voted for Stone Cold Steve Austin to be the superstar of the decade at the 10th anniversary celebration of Raw. And he decided to say this about Stone Cold. Stone Cold Steve Austin is nothing. And The Rock means nothing compared to The Rock. Oh no. You see, there is only one true superstar of the decade. True superstar of the millennium. You know who that is? The Rock will tell you who that is. Toronto. That is the jabroni beaten. Pie eating. Trailblazing. Eyebrow racing. Stronger than a bear. Faster than a buck. The biggest thing to hit Canada because the Maple Leafs suck. Hot damn, he got them there. Like, that was a right hook. Due to this statement, the fans chanted asshole at him, which is the ultimate heel accomplishment. That chant is reserved for Mr. McMahon, yet The Rock got it. The fans also cheered, you sold out, as Jerry Lawler defended him, saying that he has sold out arenas all over the world. The Rock spoke about the Battle Royal, and then he did his signature catchphrase. If you smell what The Rock... Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Whoa. You see, you were the first to boo The Rock, so you are the first to lose that sing-along privilege. No more. You can't sing along with The Rock. No, no more. So, since you were the first to boo The Rock, fans were booing, chanting asshole and whatnot. Know your role, just shut your mouth, take all your boos, and stick them straight up your maple syrup sucking candy asses. The Rock, and only The Rock has the privilege of saying this. Is cooking. Oh my god, the heat he got there. There's only one promo in Canada that I could think of that managed to get as much heat as The Rock did. And that person might have gotten even more heat because he was actually hated. You know, Shawn Michaels' promo, oh Canada, 
Anyways, one of The Rock's most memorable promos, like, how in the hell could you piss off Toronto that badly? Later that night, The Rock had his first interaction with the Hurricane. He was playing with his guitar when he interrupted. He questioned The Rock on why he trashed the people, and believe me, trashing is a bit of an understatement. Like, that wasn't trashing, that was something else. He asked, who in the not blue, but who in the green hell are you? Then he reminded Hurricane that he's no one because every single superhero, Superman, Batman, Aquaman, could all kick his ass. The Hurricane then said that he knows he could beat one superhero. You know who that is? The Scorpion King, which made the fans go crazy. He then asked the Great One if he could fly because tonight, the Hurricane is going to send his candy ass flying over the top rope in that battle royal. During the match though, The Rock eliminated and mocked the Hurricane. He then provided commentary while the competitors in the ring eliminated one another. Near the end of the match, he returned and eliminated both Kane and Christian. Booker T laid the smackdown on The Rock, but then the Great One recovered. He threw Booker into the ropes before getting eliminated himself. JR was shocked and The Rock himself applauded Booker on his victory. From there, The Rock continued to interact with the Hurricane in some really funny and entertaining segments. Like this one when The Rock reminded Hurricane of the elimination to which Hurricane reminded The Rock of Booker T. He shouted at the fans to stop cheering to which they continued. He's like, stop cheering! And they're like, ah! The Great One told Hurricane that he's 100 pounds and nothing, and The Rock got a phone call. He answered his phone and he said that it was nothing, and he told Hurricane that nothing said he knows you. He then made fun of Hurricane's braces calling him the president of the student council. He also mentioned a line from the Scorpion King. Haku, Bashante, something like that. Hurricane said that from what he's seen, it means that the Scorpion King's got a tiny dingaling. The fans left and he tried to make everyone believe otherwise. The Great One asked Hurricane, like, what do you want? Like, what do you want? He replied to this calling The Rock a coward for hiding from Steve Austin. As the Hurricane left, The Rock called his thing the man. Like, you are the man. At the end of the night, The Rock finally confronted Stone Cold Steve Austin. Rocky chant intensified before he said that it's so good to see Austin. He then gave Austin words of wisdom. He told him that when he, Austin, becomes successful, these people will turn on him just like that. The fans booed and he replied to this telling them it's not his fault that they don't got class to live in Manhattan. You know, because Raw was in Uniondale, New York. And the Great One said that he's done everything except whip that bald-headed candy ass at WrestleMania. He undermined Austin's star power and the Texas Rattlesnake replied to this challenge with, uh... Well, he didn't respond because Eric Bischoff came out and gave Rock some options. Either face Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania, or face Triple H at WrestleMania if he beats Booker T the following week. Bischoff then told Austin that this show has been running about 3 minutes too long. You obviously know what that means. Austin managed to neutralize them, and The Rock caught him off guard. They stood there in the middle of the ring face to face, and you could feel that energy. It was like a volatile situation, and it was gonna erupt. It's well known. And it did when The Rock tried to deliver a cheap shot. Austin stomped the mud hole, and he nearly hit the stunner, but the Great One managed to escape. The next week, The Rock decided to not take up Bischoff's offer for the Booker T match, and he wanted to accomplish the one thing he's never done, and that's beat Austin at WrestleMania. Bischoff said that he understands that, but he needs The Rock to compete on Raw tonight, because he already promoted The Rock's appearance, and he promised everyone that he's gonna wrestle. So the Great One decided to reveal the opponent later on. It was revealed to be Hurricane. During the matchup, the Hurricane was on the brink of victory, but then we realized that this isn't a dream, and The Rock hit the Spine Buster. He then went for the People's Elbow, but then he realized that he hates the fans, and as he ran the ropes, out came Stone Cold Steve Austin. He distracted Rock long enough for The Hurricane to capitalize on this and roll him up. This got him the three count. I mean, The Rock's reaction says it all. How does this jabroni beat me? Like, just tell me, how does this guy beat me? The Hurricane spoke about this mini feud with The Rock in an interview about a year ago. Oh, by the way, links in the description. We had one promo in Toronto. I've always had a great relationship with the city of Toronto, and it was going to be that one promo backstage. That's all it was going to be. But it went so well and everybody loved it, and it was just one of those things when I was there with it. All the boys in the locker room were like patting me on the back, telling me how great that was. Even Kevin Dunn went out of his way to come and talk to me and tell me how good that was. And Kevin's such a busy guy. He's got a lot more things on his plate to do than that. So I did well, and then later on that night in a battle royal, and I forgot what the stipulation for the battle royal was, but it was a point where I'd eliminated somebody, and then he, The Rock, came over to get me. And I started firing back on him, and you could just feel the crowd get energized by that. And I felt good about that moment, but like I said, I thought that was going to be it. And then apparently Creative and Vince McMahon just picked up on it, and they decided to roll with it. So that turned into a couple more promos, a couple more promos turned into a match. It was a very organic thing that happened that wasn't really planned ahead. Man, The Rock put over the freaking hurricane, and I commend him for that. Like, this guy is selfless. He puts over all the guys. And I believe The Rock himself lobbied to put over the hurricane. Alright, now, 
A lot of the more memorable moments from the Rax Hollywood run came on the March 24, 2003 episode of Raw. By the way, nearly all of these moments are memorable moments in his run. Like, when I think of Hollywood Rack, I think of nearly every one of these moments. Anyways, on that night, the Rack was set to perform a concert in the middle of the ring called the Rock Concert. Oh man, this is my favorite segment of his. This was so damn golden, and if only they didn't edit this out of the network. The Rock said that he was excited to be in Sacramento, because in an hour and a half, The Rock is gonna leave Sacramento. Oh man, I watched this so many times on the Raw 15th Anniversary DVD as a kid, that I basically have this memorized. Here it is. Well, I might take a plane, I might take a train. How do you people live here? You must be insane. Boo's friends are booing the hell out of him at this point. I'm leaving. Sacramento, Sacramento, I won't stay. You check it out, but I'll be sure to come back when the Lakers beat the Kings in May. And the heat he got. Jerry Lawler was like, that was number one with the bullets, and it was. Like, that was a verbal right hook. The fans were going absolutely crazy. They wanted The Rock's head at this point. He also sang some other tunes like this one. This is about Stone Cold, by the way. You ain't nothing but a redneck crying all the time. You ain't gonna beat the rock, your candy ass is all mine. If you think you're gonna beat the rock, your bald ass must be high. Oh yeah, I remember that one. There was another one, and Austin's reaction was golden. He was on the verge of laughing, so he decided to pull up the window. Eventually, an ambulance made its way towards the arena, and Austin decided to follow it. The rock called for the police. The fans booed. He replied to the fans, don't boo the cops, they're your cops. Out he came, Stone Cold Steve, nope. It was the Hurricane or in the Rock's words, the Hamburglar. He called for the police to arrest the Hamburglar due to being guilty for shoving <laughs> Chicken McNuggets up his ass. The Rock resumed his concert as the fans went crazy. He obviously thought it was because of him, so he told them to hold their applause. Austin then appeared and he ambushed The Rock. He stopped the mud hole in them and The Rock ran straight out of there as Austin grabbed his guitar. The Great One begged and pleaded for Austin to put it down and he did. As Rock was trying to get his guitar back, Austin stomped on it and destroyed it. Once Rock notices, he's like, oh hell no, I'm out of here. Like, he's running away. At WrestleMania, The Rock faced Stone Cold Steve Austin. One final time. Personally, this was my favorite of the Austin and Rock matches. I love the story of Rock trying to vanquish this one thing that has been bugging him for years. Before the match, The Rock cut one of his best promos in his career. Coach mentioned the people to which The Rock replied, People? The people? The same people who booed The Rock at last year's Wrestlemania? The same people who booed The Rock when he sang and gave the concert of a lifetime? The same people who chant sellout to The Rock? Oh, oh, The Rock is a sellout. The Rock has sold out this and every Wrestlemania he's been in. You see, Coach, you see, Coach, these people hurt me. They hurt the people's champ. So tonight, The Rock could care less about the people. You see, Coach, The Rock is here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to fulfill his destiny. Fulfill my destiny, and that is to beat Stone Cold Steve Austin right in the middle of the ring at Wrestlemania 1, 2, 3. This is the Holy Grail, the one thing that The Rock has never done, the one thing I've never done. It consumes me, it eats me alive, coach. This night, the biggest night of my life, this is everything to The Rock, everything. Oh yeah, for the past two occasions, Stone Cold Steve Austin has beaten The Rock right in the middle of the ring, right in the middle of that ring, one, two, three, has beaten The Rock. But if there's one thing that Hollywood has taught me, that's act one and act two, it don't matter. The only thing that matters, everyone remembers act three. The end, the climax, the grand finale. This is the last chapter of the greatest rivalry this industry has ever seen. When Stone Cold Steve Austin goes one on one with a jabroni beaten, pie eaten, not afraid to sweat, not afraid to bleed, gonna beat that bald headed bastard guaranteed. And then, coach, The Rock would have done it all. Finally, finally. Oh man, I had to quote this once again. It was one of his best promos. You could see how much this match meant to Rock. He knew this and he outright admitted it. This was bugging him for a very long time. Now some say he relies on catchphrases, but this promo says otherwise. He wasn't making jokes, and it was actually serious. Here's a good promo that doesn't involve many catchphrases. He wasn't cracking jokes or something in this one, he was actually serious. You know, Act 3. This was Act 3. Anyways, the match was intense, funny, and really entertaining. The Rock had to hit not one, not two, but three rock bottoms, and he lifted Austin and slammed him to the mat to emerge victorious. It was an epic encounter, and Jerry Lawler's words sum it all up. History has been made. The Rock has finally beaten Stone Cold Steve Austin. By the way, that final rock bottom sounded so devastating, and it was so dramatic. Like, The Rock hoisted him on his shoulders, and he's like, this might be it. I think he took a deep breath, too, I don't remember. And he slammed him that sound, oh man, it hurt. And yeah, 
it's sad to see that this was Austin's final match, but at least he was one of the guys that never came out of retirement and had a superb, underwhelming match. The next night on Raw, the Great One prepared to celebrate the WrestleMania victory with Rock Appreciation Night. He came out at the end of the night and he cut a promo. Finally, The Rock has come back to see... To see all you little jabronis show appreciation to the great one. The Rock said that Stone Cold and himself put on a hell of a performance and he has nothing but respect for him. He added if Austin knew this was his final match then he wouldn't have liked the way he went out. Great one chance intensified after he called himself the GOAT. He said that he's beaten everyone and there's nothing left for The Rock. The fans booed him and now at 30 years old, The Rock has done it all and he says it's over. He told the fans that this is the final time they're going to see him and they could all kiss his ass because they were booing him. Suddenly, Goldberg decided to debut. He came out and it was his first appearance, obviously, in WWE because I just said it's his debut. He asked The Rock if he knows who's next before informing the Great One that he is. He speared the hell out of The Rock like a freaking bull. He ran straight into him the way he sold it. Man, it was an awesome segment. While The Rock had issues with Goldberg, he met his biggest fan. By the way, it was Christian. He told Christian that he should grab the opportunity he is given and take advantage of it. He told him to own the room he enters. Except this one, because the rack's here. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because one, it was funny, and two, this led to Christian's push and his transition into Captain Charisma. After his match with Jeff Hardy, The Rock called out Bill Goldberg. He told him to just bring it out he came. This was a situation that was about to unfold or did it. The Rock challenged Goldberg to a match before saying, nah. I ain't accepting the match. He walked out on Goldberg, and it wasn't until the following week that Rock spoke about this. The Rock via satellite mocked Goldberg, and he claimed that he isn't afraid of him. He said that he'll slap his monkey ass all over the ring, and he isn't going to be scared of Goldberg's mannerism. You know, ah, wow. In the end, he accepted the match, and Coach asked Rock if there's one thing he'll say to Goldberg. He answered stating that he isn't next. As a matter of fact, he's going to take Goldberg's horns and stick them straight up his candy ass. On the final Raw before Backlash, The Rock performed a concert in the middle of the ring. The crowd, which was in Atlanta, you know, cheered the hell out of The Rock. It was Goldberg's hometown, by the way. During The Rock concert, he brought out Goldberg to hear this performance. Here he is. Well, obviously, it was Goldberg. Goldberg did a Goldberg impression spitting on the mic, and the real Goldberg decided to come out, and The Rock called for security. The fans booed the security, and The Rock said that they shouldn't boo the security because they're from Atlanta, you know, your city. Goldberg came out, and The Rock said he doesn't care if he whoops Goldberg's ass. He then threatened Goldberg before running away from him. Bill annihilated the security one by one as The Rock shouted that he's paid them good money. I paid you good money! Goldberg ambushed Goldberg and The Rock capitalized on this by hitting The Rock bottom on him. Goldberg recovered and The Rock ran away. The Great One entered his Hummer limousine as Goldberg entered his Barracuda in hot pursuit. And by the way, he didn't get to follow the limousine because his engine was blown or something like that and he decided to run on foot. All of a sudden, we see The Rock who didn't even leave the arena. The Great One decided, you know what, since Goldberg left the arena, he's gonna have an encore a bit later that night. Once again, Goldberg crashed the party. He kicked The Rock's ass and right when he measured him for the spear, Christian ambushed him. The Great One wanted to finish this himself, but he got a clothesline. Goldberg speared Christian and The Rock blasted him several times with a steel chair. And the funny part in this is the fact that the fans chanted Rocky, although that changed a few seconds, they were cheering for Goldberg then. Anyways, the match at Backlash was decent. At least the last time I watched it. Yeah, sure, it could've, might've been better, but at least we got to see these two face off at least once. We can't really say the same for Austin and Goldberg. In the end, Goldberg shot up the comedic Great One with a spear and a jackhammer to emerge victorious. After the event went off the air, The Rock was still selling the devastating spear 5 or 10 minutes afterwards. He fought with a fan and he said that this isn't goodbye because he'll be back soon, and he shouted if he smelled The Rock is cooking before leaving. He was no longer a heel, I guess. Upon his return, The Rock turned into a face. Christian was trying to steal a spotlight, and the Great One put him in his place. Booker T then saved him from a Y2J and kept the charisma attack, and he performed a spin a Rooney. And that's it, that's the end of Hollywood Rock. From January 30, 2003 to June 2, 2003, that was Hollywood. After this, he stopped wearing the leather and instead returned to wearing the track pads and t-shirt combo. He started to team up with Mick Foley, and he was in Hollywood. That's it. And that's it for this video. Hollywood Rock is my favorite iteration of his, like... He was all in with that character, and since the fans were booing him, he decided to ridicule and embarrass them, and he was so entertaining. Like, despite being a heel, this guy was funny as hell, and the fans couldn't hate him. Like, yeah, sure, they booed him at times, but they couldn't really hate him. Like, you're gonna hate The Rock? That doesn't make sense. All in all, my favorite version of his character, and, and personally, I thought this was one of my favorite videos. As a matter of fact, it is my favorite video. I had so much fun making this, and... It wasn't like any other video, like, it was so damn fun to make this and hear The Rock making fun of these fans and doing this kind of stuff. It was amazing. That's it for this video, make sure you hit The Rock bottom on the like button and perhaps a people's elbow on the subscribe button.
peace. I'm out.